Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. So shortly after filming my 2021 Buzzword Readathon TBR, using books that I own, I was then invited to join in on Maya from the Duo at Bookworm Dreams to do a science fiction list, and I like lists, and I couldn't resist. So I think I'm going to be putting up both buzzword readathons pretty, like TBRs pretty soon, but this is the sci-fi list. And something that I find that's very cool is with this list, I was actually able to get a lot of the books. To, they either came out in 2021, or they are related to books that came out in 2021. So that was really cool for me. Another caveat is this, so it's a science fiction list and a lot of people will lump science fiction and fantasy together and this list is more sci-fi, so it's more the science based. Not They might have a blending of science fiction and fantasy, but for the most part it is science fiction. And so for January, uh, which is the month of the five W's or the question words, I have and What Can We Offer You Tonight by Primi Mohammed. The synopsis reads, In a far future city, which is how we get the science fiction, where you can fall to a government cull for a single mistake, and What Can We Offer You Tonight tells the story of Jewel, established courtesan in a luxurious house. Jewel's world is shaken when a friend is murdered by a client, but somehow comes back to life. And this is actually a novella. It's about 80 pages, and I'm looking forward to reading that in the month of January. And so for the month of February, I have chosen You Sexy Thing by Kat Rambo. And the tagline for this is kind of interesting, or the comparison line of this is kind of interesting. It's Farscape meets the Great British Bake Off in this fantastic space opera. Okay, those are, all right, how are we putting these all together? And the synopsis is, Twice Far Station is at the edge of the known universe, and that's just how Nico Larson, former admiral in the grand military of the hive mind, likes it. Retired and finally free of the continual war of conquest, Nico and the remnants of her former unit are content to spend the rest of their days working at the restaurant they built together, The Last Chance. Honestly, you've had me at space opera. And February's theme is pronouns, which is how we get the you. All right, so for the month of March, we have locations. And the book that I found is City of Shattered Light by Claire Wynn. And then reading the synopsis, the City of Shattered Light is a location within this world. So that's where it works for my location prompt. The quick synopsis of this, as darkness closes in on the City of Shattered Light, an heiress and an outlaw must decide whether to fend for themselves or fight for each other. As heiress to a powerful tech empire, 17-year-old Asa Alameda strives to prove she's more than her manipulative father's shadow. But when he uploads her rebellious sister's mind to an experimental brain, Asa will do anything to save her sister from reprogramming, including fleeing her predetermined future with her sister's di digitized mind in tow. Okay, for April. April's month is size words, big or little. And I was actually having a little bit of a hard time with that one. And then I came across that I had saved the book, The Quantum Magician by Derek Kunskin. And now if you're wondering, is quantum a size word? Yes, actually it is. It is a size word. I had to look up the definition. And then after I was look, I, re, I looked up the definition of quantum, I looked up the definition of size and yes, quantum is a size word. It is an amount. So yay, it works, which I'm very happy for. And the synopsis for this is, Belisarius is a quantum man, an engineered homo quantus who fled the powerful insight of dangerously addictive quantum senses. He found a precarious balance as a con man, but when a client offers him untold wealth to move a squadron of warships across an enemy wormhole, he must embrace his birthright to even try. In fact, the job is so big that he'll need a crew built from all the new sub-branches of humanity. If he succeeds, he might trigger an interstellar war, but success might also point the way to the next step of Homo Quantus evolution. And that just sounds like so much fun. <laughs> so that is what I'm reading for April and the size words. 
And then for May, I have directions. And if you watched my other buzzword readathon video, it's the same one. It's Starsight by Brandon Sanderson because Starsight is a direction. Look it up. No, you don't have to. And this is a sequel in the Skyward series. I just know we're following Spinsa, but from what I understand, she'll be in a different location. I don't want to spoil it for myself. All right, so if there's month of June, you have to have the word all in the title. And I chose The All-Consuming World by Cassandra Ka. The synopsis for this is, a diverse team of broken, diminished former criminals get back together to solve the mystery of their last disastrous mission and to rescue a missing and much-changed comrade. But they're not the only ones in pursuit of the secret at the heart of the planet, Dimmeborger. The highly involved AI of the universe have their own agenda and will do whatever it takes to keep humans from ever controlling the universe again. This band of dangerous women, half clone and half machine, must battle their own traumas and a universe of sapient age ships who want them dead in order to settle their affairs once and for all. Then for the month of July, you have to read a book that has book-related words. And for this, I have chosen The Invisible Library. And that title might not seem like it's science fiction, but the synopsis has somebody basically time traveling or jumping between multiverses. That's science fiction to me. Irene is a professional spy for the mysterious library, which harvests fiction from different realities. And along with her enigmatic assistant Kai, she's posted to an alternative London, their mission to retrieve a dangerous book. But when they arrive, it's already been stolen. London's underground factions seem prepared to fight to the very death to find her book. Adding to the jeopardy, this world is chaos infested, the laws of nature bent to allow supernatural creatures and unpredictable magic, Irene's new assistant is also hiding secrets of his own. That just sounds like a lot of fun. What can I say? So for the month of August, we have to have something in the title that's an item. And for this, I have chosen Fortuna by Kristen Merbeth. And reading the synopsis, Fortuna is the spaceship. A spaceship is an item. Scorpia Kaiser has always stood in Corvus's shadow until the day her older brother abandons their family to participate in a profit profitless war. Blah. However, becoming the heir to her mother's smuggling operation is not an easy transition for the always rebellious, usually reckless, and occasionally drunk pilot of the Fortuna, an aging cargo ship, and the only home Scorpia has ever known. But when a deal turns deadly and Corvus returns from the war, Scorpia's plans to take over the family business are interrupted, and the Kaiser siblings are forced to make a choice. Take responsibility for their family's involvement in a devastating massacre, or lay low and hope it blows over. So for the month of September, the words are light plus dark. So I chose one of them. <laughs> I chose light. And for the book I chose is First Light by Casey E. Berger. When J.M. Mill's parents were killed and her brother was kidnapped in an attack on her childhood home, she saw only one future for herself, enlist in the Union Starfleet and learn to defend herself. Now as a lieutenant commander and her elite counterterrorism unit, enlist to help enlist the help of Tyan Vasuda, an alien scientist, to investigate the potentially sinister research of the new, mysteriously well-funded Sons of Priam. I love that I'm finding tons of space operas. It makes me so happy. And so for the month of October, the prompt is Creatures and Animals. And going science fiction route, that was a little bit hard, but I managed to do it. And I found Fox Hunt by Rim Wickmore. In a lush future, that's science fiction. Plants have stripped most of the poison from the air, and bounty hunters keep resource hoarders in check. Orpheus only wants to be a traveling singer, famed and adored. She has her share of secrets, but she's no energy criminal. So why does a bounty hunter want her dead? Not just any bounty hunter, but the wolf. Most fearsome of all the order of the vengeful wild. Orpheus will call in every favor she has to find out, seeking answers while clinging to her pride and fending off the hunters of the wild but she isn't the only one at risk. Every misstep endangers the enemies she turns into allies and the allies she brings into danger. There are worse monsters than the wolf hiding in this new green world. For November, I have Aurora Burning by Amy 
Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is number two in the Aurora Rising series. So again, I don't want to know too much about it since it's picking up from the first book. And for December, we have numbers. And for that, I have chosen Five Minds by Guy Morpus. And the tagline for this is one body, five minds, one killer. So it sounds like multiple personalities or multiple people inside one body. The Earth's growing population has finally been controlled. Lifespans are limited to 80 years, except for those who make an extreme choice to become a commune. Five minds sharing one body, living for four hours at a time, but with a combined lifespan of nearly 150 years. No, thank you. Alex, Kate, Sierra, Ben, and Mike are a commune. They have already spent 25 years together, arguing, reconciling, alliances shifting and reforming. They travel to a death park where games are played in which extra lifespan can be gambled like money. The plan is to win time to upgrade their next host body, but then Kate accepts a dangerous offer, and one of them disappears. Someone is trying to kill off members of the commune. Is one of them responsible? Or is someone else playing a deadly game? It's hard enough to catch a murderer. It's almost impossible when you might be sharing a body with them. What can I say? This is my sci-fi version of the Buzzword Readathon, and I really look forward to seeing what Maya will pick up throughout the year and anybody else that is doing this challenge. Thank you, and have a great day.